Have you ever noticed how every new piece of gear is somehow way better than the old stuff and you got to ditch the old stuff to buy the new stuff because that's that's how you're cutting edge and that's how you get all the best features? And it can be kind of tiring after a while feeling like you always have to buy the newest, latest, and greatest thing when they're coming out with the newest, latest, greatest stuff every couple of years. Now, I'm kind of like this with my phone, so I'll use that as an example, but it's kind of applies to all technology in general, is that just because something's new doesn't mean it's worth the upgrade. And what I mean by that is if, if you're looking to get into um, camera stuff, right, or shooting or editing or, or whatever, there's always gear associated with it, whether it's lenses or cameras or computers. And that first time that you get in, you break in, you buy what you can afford. I'm a huge proponent of that. Don't you know, take out a second mortgage just to buy camera equipment. Buy what you can afford. Buy what you can reasonably pay off with a proper business plan. You know, Have people asking you to do work, right? And, and yes, there's some investment that must be made, but at the same time, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew and you don't want to invest in all this stuff when you're not going to be able to pay it off. So buy what you can afford, but also try and buy the best stuff that you can afford at the time that's going to last you the longest. And, and maybe you want to take the opposite approach and just buy like the old stuff. And that, that's totally fine too, because realistically, all the gear that we have nowadays is, for the most part, all of it is pretty much equal. It sounds kind of silly because there's huge price variations between everything. But when you're talking about average people watching the end product or looking at the end result, most people can't tell the difference between something that was shot on a $50,000 camera and a $500 camera. They, they can't. These, I mean, they're watching it compressed on the internet, on their smartphone on a screen this big, and they can't tell as long as it's lit well and sounds good. And, you know, there's, there's some stuff to it that you have to do to make it presentable. But one piece of gear isn't going to take your, your projects from, oh, my gosh, this is crap to, holy cow, this is amazing. It's not going to happen with one piece of gear. Now, you might have a whole kit that helps you kind of move that direction. You know, there's some things that, you know, you can't be recreated in, in other ways. But, for example... Uh, a couple years ago at NAB, Freefly came out with the Movi, right? Huge groundbreaking stuff. Oh, these are, you know, stabilization gimbals, these electronic gimbals with these motors, the brushless motors. It's amazing. It's never before been done. But then you have people who shoot on mechanical gimbals all the time that are a fraction of the cost. And yeah, they're not technically equal, but when you're showing to the average person, if you're good with a, a mechanical gimbal, you can kind of, you know, it's it's, it's kind of indistinguishable from a Movi to the average person. Yes, the professionals are going to be able to see, oh, it's, it shakes a little bit more. Oh, they, you know, they didn't do that handoff as perfectly. But for most people watching, they look and they see a shot that's stable and they see a shot that's stable. Now, same thing for cameras with dynamic range, right? You know, some cameras have a lot more dynamic range. Some cameras have far less. But most people, when they look at an image, they're not analyzing how many stops a dynamic range are in that image. They're just looking at it if it's pleasing to their eye or not. And a lot of times, stuff can be blown out or crushed and still look good. So when you're looking at YouTube or her wherever, and someone says, like, oh, this new thing, it's so much better. Oh, my gosh. GoPro, perfect example, right? GoPro keeps coming out with cameras, and every one of them is way better than the one before. And you need the new one because it's so much better. I don't know that that's true. If it's your first GoPro, then yeah. And if you can afford the high-end one, get the brand new one. Go for it. Go nuts. But if you have the last generation and the new one comes out, don't feel like you have to throw it away or sell it on Craigslist just because something new came out. What I really think we should be doing is forcing these companies, or encouraging these companies rather, to actually give us features that we don't have that are innovations, that are breakthroughs right? The, the GH1 to GH3 and even to the GH4, like what are the incremental jumps between those cameras? At what point is it worth it? Do you need to buy every one? The 5D1 to the 5D2 to the 5D3 and now to the 5D4, what are the jumps and what are the increments between those cameras? And really only buy stuff, this is what I would say, only buy stuff if it's giving you something that you don't currently have, that there's no way you can do what the new thing is doing. If, if it's the difference between, oh, this one shoots 10 frames a second and that one shoots 12 frames a second for photography, I, I don't know how many people actually need the extra two frames it's giving them. 
Maybe that's you. Maybe maybe that's really a, a check mark that you need on your box. But I think most people are probably fine with the 10 frames a second one. You know, 14 stops of dynamic range, 13 stops of dynamic range. 14 is better. Certainly, it, it, it's more. But do you need it? Do you actually need it to the point where you need to get rid of the stuff that you're comfortable with, that you that it's working, that's been paid off? to get the new thing. Now, if it's the difference between you have a camera that shoots five stops of dynamic range and then 15 stops, okay, sold, yeah, do it. But just keep all that stuff in mind, keep that in check when you're looking at these features because marketing people love to throw features at you as like, this is why you need to buy the latest and greatest thing because we've mildly upgraded it in all of these different categories. And you look at it and overall it looks pretty good, but then we take a step back, it's pretty much it's a it's a small upgrade when you when you consider it. So just keep that in mind. I, I hate when I see videos on YouTube of people praising the latest. You know they do their unboxing and their testing and all the stuff of like the new thing that's the upgrade to the old thing, and they claim how great it is. But when you look at it on paper, it's like it's really not that big of a difference. So maybe that's just the skeptic in me just being kind of negative about it. I know I've talked about, uh, you know, not investing too much and getting t too tied to your gear because that's the other thing, right? You wouldn't want to get so invested in what you have that you're never willing to upgrade and losing out on, on features. But when it's the difference between something that shoots 120 frames a second and 150, do you really need that? Now, if it shoots 1,050 frames a second, maybe. Maybe that's something that you need and you're willing to pay for. But these, these small upgrades, at like back to my phone, right? This is the 5S because I got it from my wife because I still had the 4S because she wanted the upgrade. Um, the, it's, the, the upgrades to these phones are, are minimal. They try and add new bells and whistles to get everyone excited about the new latest greatest thing. But at the end of the day, you can still get by with the old stuff to a certain extent. But now they have all these companies who are, you know, they jack up the software to make your hardware not function properly. And that's a whole nother video. So I'll leave that for another one. Thankfully, camera companies aren't doing that yet that I'm aware of. I haven't seen any killer firmware that's destroyed and bricked cameras. But um, for phones, that's definitely a thing. So in any case, just be cautious when someone's trying to sell you on the latest and greatest if you already have the previous version of it because it's it's likely something that you don't necessarily need. And you can probably wait a generation or two, but again, it all comes down to the individual and what makes the most sense for you. Just look for the actual features that you don't have that you desperately need, and then you can know if it's worth it or not.